This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. We begin today's show in Alabama, where Democrat Doug Jones and Republican Roy Moore are locked in a tight and increasingly controversial race to fill the Alabama Senate seat left vacant by Attorney General Jeff Sessions. The election is Tuesday. A Democrat hasn't won a U.S. Senate race in Alabama for 20 years. Polling shows the two candidates are neck and neck, despite Moore being accused by at least nine women of sexually harassing or assaulting them when they were teenagers. One of the women says Moore removed her shirt and pants and touched her over her bra and underwear when she was 14 years old. She says she recalls thinking, I wanted it over with, I want it out, please just get this over with, whatever this is, just get it over. President Trump has repeatedly endorsed the accused child molester, Roy Moore, including on Friday, when he held a rally in Pensacola, Florida, which is 20 miles from the Alabama border and in the same media market as Mobile, Alabama. We want jobs, jobs, jobs. So get out and vote for Roy Moore. Do it. Do it. That's President Trump speaking Friday. He's also recorded a robocall endorsing Roy Moore. Hi, this is President Donald Trump, and I need Alabama to go vote for Roy Moore. It is so important. We're already making America great again. I'm going to make America safer and stronger and better than ever before. But we need that seat. We need Roy voting for us. Roy Moore has had a long and highly controversial political career in Alabama that's been marked by racism, homophobia, Islamophobia, religious fanaticism. Judge Moore was twice ousted as Alabama's chief justice, first in 2003, for refusing to remove a monument to the Ten Commandments in the rotunda of the Alabama Judicial Building. After being reelected, he was again ousted in 2016 for ordering his judges to defy the U.S. Supreme Court's ruling legalizing marriage equality. He was a proponent of Trump's racist and discredited birther theory about President Obama. He's compared homosexuality to bestiality. He said Minnesota Congressmember Keith Ellison shouldn't have been allowed to be sworn into Congress using a Quran, which he compared to Mein Kampf. In 2011, Roy Moore proposed eliminating all amendments after the 10th, which includes amendments prohibiting slavery and the amendments giving women and African Americans the right to vote. In September, when asked at a campaign rally when he thought America was last great, Moore said, quote, I think it was great at the time when families were united, even though they, we had slavery. They cared for one another. Our families were strong. Our country had a direction. Over the weekend, the Doug Jones campaign orchestrated a massive get-out-the-vote effort, particularly targeting African-American voters. A number of prominent African-American politicians, including New Jersey Senator Cory Booker, Alabama Congressmember Terry Sewell, former Massachusetts Democratic Governor Deval Patrick, all campaigned for Jones across the state of Alabama. Jones' campaign ads are also highlighting his history as a U.S. attorney in the 1990s, when he prosecuted the Ku Klux Klan, uh, the members who bombed the 16th-century Baptist Church in Birmingham, killing four young girls. On Sunday, Alabama Republican Senator Richard Shelby said he could not vote for his fellow Republican, Roy Moore. I uh, couldn't vote for Roy Moore. I didn't vote for Roy Moore. I understand where the president's coming from. I understand we would like to retain that seat in the U.S. Senate. Uh, but I tell you what, I, there, there's a time, there's, we call it a tipping point. Uh, and I think so many accusations, so many cuts, so many drip, 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 uh, when it got to the 14-year-old story, uh, story. Uh, that was enough for me. I said, I can't vote for Roy Moore. That was Senator Richard Shelby of Alabama, a Republican. For more, we go to Washington, D.C., where we're joined by Peter Montgomery, senior fellow at People for the American Way. His most recent piece headlined, There's More Than One Roy Moore Scandal. Um, talk about Roy Moore, Peter Montgomery. You also wrote the piece, Roy Moore, A History of Bigotry, Extremism and Contempt for the Rule of Law. But talk about the scandals around the former Alabama judge. Well, you, your introduction did a great job outlining some of them. I think it's scandalous that we have the Republican Party and a president supporting from the, someone for the Senate whose whole career has demonstrated such contempt for 
core constitutional principles and the rule of law. And that's before you consider the allegations that are made by uh, a number of women about him preying on and molesting teenage girls. Roy, has, Roy Moore has a long record of uh, violating court orders when he disagrees with them and when uh, he thinks they uh, violate his uh, biblical worldview. Well, you've done a comprehensive look at his history. Go back to the beginning and talk about what you know about Roy Moore. Well, Roy Moore uh, went to law school after he had uh, gone to West Point and served in Vietnam. And after he got out of law school, he became an assistant district attorney, uh, uh, which is when he um, has allegedly involved in uh, preying on teenage girls. And after that, he became a state judge in uh, Etowah County, in the northeastern part of the state. And that's when he had his first big controversy over his misuse of the court to promote his religious beliefs. He hung a handmade plaque of the Ten Commandments in his courtroom, and he was beginning uh, sessions with jurors with uh, Christian prayers. And he was very explicit about the fact that uh, others could join him in prayer, but only if they were Christians because uh, he wouldn't allow uh, Muslims or Buddhists, because uh, they don't worship the right God. And so there was a lot of controversy over that at the time. This is the late 1990s. And uh, religious right leaders from around the country came and rallied around him. And he sort of used that at his, as the uh, launching point of his political career and his first run for uh, chief justice, which he was elected in 2000. And talk about being removed from the bench um, in both cases and what that means for a chief justice to be removed from the Alabama bench. Obviously, that's something very extraordinary. Here you have someone who uh, is elected by the voters, who is the uh, top judge in the state Supreme Court, and uh, his fellow judges um, took steps to remove him for violating his uh, professional responsibilities. The first time, he had, again, uh, played on his uh, support for the Ten Commandments and his desire to use the courts to uh, promote his uh, religious beliefs and his religious worldview. He had this huge Ten Commandments monument uh, carved out of granite and brought into the state courthouse that he presided over. And when, uh, a, federal, when a court ordered him to remove that, he refused. And so, for defying the court order, he was removed by his fellow judges. Uh, and it's interesting that Moore loves to say that he is the victim of persecution by, uh, you know, radical liberals and, and uh, LGBT people, but he was removed by other state judges from Alabama, and I don't think that's a, a hotbed of uh, left-wing radicalism. Uh, then a, a decade after he was uh, kicked out, he was elected again, and this time he was challenged because he started to— um, order uh, lower judges in the state to ignore, first in 2015, a federal judge who uh, ruled in favor of marriage equality in the state. Uh, and then later, when the Supreme Court of the United States uh, had the Ober Obergefell decision, which endorsed marriage equality across the country, he again uh, told judges that they should uh, not follow that order. And that was uh, crossing the line the second time. And he was uh, suspended permanently from his job that time. Mm. On the issue of homosexuality, Roy Moore has compared homosexuality to bestiality. Um, can you talk about President Trump's endorsement of Roy Moore? And did this surprise you, Peter Montgomery? I'm not sure if there's anything President Trump can do anymore that surprises me. And it doesn't surprise me that he supported Roy Moore, because um, Roy Moore has uh, praised President Trump, has positioned himself as someone who wants to help President Trump make America great again, and Trump wants his vote in the Senate. I do think that it's scandalous that the Republican Party has gone along with Trump and supported someone who uh, is as extreme as Roy Moore is. And I think they really need to be held accountable for it. <coughs> On the issue of gay rights and LGBT people, Moore is utterly opposed to the core constitutional principle of equality under the law. And it's not just about opposition to gay marriage for him. He wants to make homosexuality criminal. He wants to go back to the days when 
uh, being gay was per se uh, a, a criminal act. Uh, and, and he has backed up that kind of thinking as a judge. Uh, he supported, uh, in 2002, taking a child away from a woman because she was a lesbian. And he said that anybody who participates in such an inherently evil act as homosexuality is inherently an unfit parent. And that's pretty terrifying. Um, earlier this year, uh, Roy Moore called for the removal of the judge who struck down Trump's ban on transgender people in the military, saying her decision was completely ridiculous and a clear example of judicial activism. Moore's statement said, Judge Kolar Kotele should be impeached by the House of Representatives for unlawful usurpation of power. Not only has she placed herself above the Constitution, but she's also interfered with the powers of the president as commander-in-chief of the armed forces. Well, and that really uh, takes us to another core constitutional principle, which is judicial independence and the rule of law. And Moore has no respect for judges who disagree with him. Uh, obviously, um, the example you just cited is one. He also spoke at a religious right political conference earlier this year that I went to to hear him speak. And he said there that uh, the Supreme Court justices who supported and ruled in favor of marriage equality should be impeached. And he vowed specifically that when he gets to the Senate, he will use his power as a senator uh, to stop what he called the submission to the federal judiciary by the legislative branch. So uh, he clearly is no um, supporter of judicial independence, which is something that Americans have relied on to uh, defend and uphold our rights. In 2011, Roy Moore proposed eliminating all amendments after the Tenth Amendment, which includes the amendments prohibiting slavery, the amendments giving women and African Americans the right to vote. He was speaking on a radio show. Personally, I would like to see an amendment that says all the amendments after 10. Uh, yes. That would eliminate many problems. You know, people don't understand how some of these amendments have completely tried to wreck the form of government that our forefathers intended. Uh, Peter Montgomery, can you talk about this? E eliminating everything after the Tenth Amendment. And then, when asked by the only uh, black member of an audience recently about when was America great, you know, referring to make America great again, he refers to slavery time. Yeah, this really gets to a big picture worldview on the, on the fringes of the conservative movement that Roy Moore is, is deeply intertwined with. You know, this. Um, nostalgia for a constitutional order that is utterly grounded in states' rights, where the federal government has uh, radically limited powers to interfere with what the states do and to protect uh, individual civil rights. Um, and, and Roy Moore is very uh, tied up in that. It's connected to a radical uh, Christian Reconstructionist theology that says the federal government has no role in education or uh, care for the poor or feeding the hungry, that those are all uh, jobs that God has reserved for the family and the church. Uh, so it's, it's really disturbing to hear more talk like that. But when you realize uh, the worldview that he is, he's coming from and that, that he has made his, uh, has been made very clear during his career that he embraces, it's not that surprising. Roy Moore said, I'm going to tell you about the only thing I know that the Islamic faith has done in this country is 9-11. He also said that the Quran, Keith Ellison, the first Muslim member of Congress, should not be able to be sworn in on his holy book, on the Quran, comparing it to Mein Kampf. Yeah, I, I think the whole episode with Keith Ellison should, in itself, even if you ignore all the other things we've just talked about, all the other radicalism and extremism, the Keith Ellison episode itself should make him unfit and should, you know, shame every Republican who's now endorsing him. Who had Keith Ellison, who was elected uh, to serve in the Congress, and as a Muslim, he uh, chose for his ceremonial swearing in to use the Quran the way uh, most members of Congress, when they come in, they do a ceremonial swearing in using the Bible. And, you know, Roy Moore just uh, used that as an opportunity to display his raw religious bigotry and his belief that Christians in America 
are the real Americans. And he said that Congress should refuse to seat more. I mean, should refuse to seat Keith Ellison because he said that it's impossible for a Muslim to honestly swear an oath to uphold the Constitution. And that's it's so offensive uh, that I think really that in itself should be disqualifying. Peter Montgomery, right now, the race is too close to call. At Democracy Now!, we really don't rely on polls very much before, uh, uh, you know, the day of the election. Um, can you talk about the strategy of Doug Jones uh, this weekend, bringing in top African-American leaders uh, to push hard to get the African-American vote out? It might simply be vote count being up, the issue in Alabama of voting polls being cut down uh, under voter laws that have been increasingly restrictive? Well, we certainly see that that's been one of the big-picture strategies from the Republican Party in recent years, particularly once the conservatives on the U.S. Supreme Court gutted key provisions of the Voting Rights Act. So, um, voter suppression and laws that uh, make it harder to vote are a huge concern. So I think that the kind of concerted get out the vote and mobilizing uh, is really important. And it's great that the, the, the party and the Doug Jones campaign was doing that. I know Doug Jones has also been uh, uh, trying to um, build on the sentiments that were expressed by Richard Shelby in your introduction among the Republicans who do not feel comfortable uh, being represented by Roy Moore. And Doug Jones has run some ads uh, featuring those Republicans to try to, uh, I think, encourage Republicans uh, who might cross over. So, it's, I think it's important that he's doing both those things, that he's appealing to uh, Republicans who just can't go there with Roy Moore, but he's also really working hard to get out the Democratic vote, because that's really uh, the only way Doug Jones has a, has a chance to win. Finally, there was a vice uh, focus group. Um, uh, hmm. Frank Lunds interviewed some of Moore's supporters. Um, one said, 40 years ago in Alabama, there's a lot of mamas and daddies that would be thrilled that their 14-year-old was getting hit on by a district attorney. Another voter said the women's reputations were questionable at the time, Peter Montgomery. The allegations of sexual abuse and that um, Roy Moore is an accused pedophile. Yeah, the, the focus group was really disturbing for a number of reasons. And, you know, the one you mentioned about uh, someone saying, well, back then it would have been OK, uh, it's really stunning. You know, there's some really good work has been done by religion scholars, uh, including Julie Ingersoll, who's reported on the fact that within, uh, you know, certain parts of the conservative Christian movement uh, that focus on biblical patriarchy and uh, female submission to men, this idea of uh, older men marrying teenage girls is part of that subculture. Uh, you know, uh, Phil Robertson from Duck Dynasty, who's really become this big uh, religious right and Republican Party activist, you know, he's basically said that girls should get married at 15, at 15 or 16, and that, you know, if they're young enough, then guys can be sure that they're, they're pure for them and ready for them to sort of be handed over from uh, their father to their new husband. So. Um, that is a disturbing uh, strain of, of conservative uh, Christian subculture that, that Roy Moore is connected to. Well, I want to thank you, Peter Montgomery, for joining us, senior fellow at People for the American Way. We'll link to your pieces, the one There's More Than One Roy Moore Scandal, um, and your report on Roy Moore, um, a history of bigotry, extremism and contempt for the rule of law. The accused pedophile will run in a special election on Tuesday um, against Doug Jones for the U.S. Senate seat um, that was uh, um, vacated by Jeff Sessions, who became President Trump's attorney general. Um, of course, we'll be reporting on that tomorrow. Um, and Richard Shelby, the latest news, the Alabama Republican senator coming out against Roy Moore, saying he could not support him. President Trump, on the other hand, um, has made a robocall supporting Roy Moore, 
held a rally supporting Roy Moore in the Mobile, Alabama, media market this weekend in Pensacola, Florida, um, supporting the accused pedophile. This is Democracy Now! We'll be back in a minute in Jackson, Mississippi, where President Trump went to dedicate the opening of two new civil rights museums. Our guests didn't go to all the ceremonies protesting President Trump's presence, but the museums themselves are quite remarkable, and we'll talk about civil rights history. Stay with us.